The English word wolf stems from the Old English wolf, which is itself thought to be derived from the Proto-Germanic vulfus. Most canines that we call wolves belong to a single species, Canis lupus. Wolves are the largest members of the canid family. This is the species from which our pet dogs were domesticated. Within that species, there are dozens of different verified subspecies, as well as a handful of disputed subspecies. In this video, we will explore 27 different types of wolves that currently roam the earth. First up on our list is the tundra wolf. They are native to Eurasia's tundra and forest tundra zones. For the most part, they're found in Russia, particularly within the Kamchatka Peninsula, though they're sometimes spotted in the northernmost reaches of Scandinavia. The tundra wolf fur is very long, dense, fluffy and soft, and is usually light and gray in color. However, like all wolves, the coat color varies widely, so it's hard to identify the tundra wolf in the open. The steppe wolf, also known as the Caspian Sea Wolf, is a subspecies of gray wolf native to the Caspian steppes, the steppe regions of the Caucasus, and the lower Volga region. The fur of steppe wolves in Kazakhstan and in Middle Asia tends to have more reddish tones. While the steppe wolf's population is currently somewhat stable, it is at a heightened risk of extinction due to increasing human-wolf conflicts over the years. They are still hunted throughout various parts of their habitat as they are not protected under most national laws. While many people wouldn't necessarily think of a New Guinea singing dog as a wolf, it is indeed a subspecies of Connie's lupus. In fact, it is commonly called a dingo and is one of the smallest types of wolves on the planet. They are highly adaptable animals that can live anywhere from the mountains to the plains. All sightings in the wild were of single dogs, or pairs. So it is widely believed that New Guinea singing dogs do not form permanent packs. The Eurasian wolf, also known as the common wolf, is a subspecies of gray wolf native to Europe and the forest and steppe zones of the former Soviet Union. It was once widespread throughout Eurasia, prior to the Middle Ages, but their decline started in the same period, when an organized effort of extermination that continued until the late 1800s threatened this subspecies. It is also one of the largest subspecies, some individuals weighing up to 158 pounds. The Eurasian wolf was held in high regard in Baltic, Celtic, Slavic, and Roman cultures, among many others. Next up on our list is the Iberian wolf. Also known as the Spanish wolf, it is considered to be a distinct subspecies of the Eurasian wolf. It inhabits the northwest of the Iberian Peninsula, which includes northwestern Spain, and northern Portugal. This area is home to approximately 2400 wolves, which have been isolated from mixing with other wolf populations for over a century. They form the largest wolf population in Western Europe. They are easily identifiable by their white stripes on the snouts, and black marks on the front legs. The Mongolian wolf is a very close relative of the Himalayan wolf. This type of wolf is traditionally found throughout Mongolia and parts of China, Russia, and South Korea. Their fur has been described as reddish yellow with intermixed black and gray hairs, the throat, chest, belly, and inside of the legs is pure white. At one point it was estimated that more than 30,000 individuals existed in Mongolia, but this number declined to about 10,000 in the early 2000s as a direct result of wolf hunting. Next up on our list we have the Arabian wolf. Once thought to be synonymous with the Indian wolf, the Arabian wolf was designated to its own subspecies in 1934 by British zoologist Reginald Innes Pockick. These wolves are fairly unique among their species as they live in the desert rather than forested or tundra environments. As a result, they have very thin and short fur that tends to be lightly colored. The Arabian wolf was once found throughout the Arabian Peninsula, but now leaves only in small pockets in southern Israel, southern and western Iraq, Oman, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and some parts of the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. Also known as the Tibetan wolf, the Himalayan wolf can be found throughout the Indian subcontinent, including parts of the Himalaya. They can live in a variety of ecosystems, including mountains, forests, and alpine regions, though they tend to prefer grasslands. The Himalayan wolf has a thick woolly fur that is dull earthy brown on the back and tail, and yellowish white on the face, belly, and limbs. Due to the altitude at which this subspecies exists, the heart of the Himalayan wolf adapted to withstand the low oxygen level at high elevations. This is possible due to a strong selection for RYR2, a gene that initiates cardiac excitation. 
One of the less common wolf subspecies, the Indian wolf, can be found everywhere from Southwest Asia to the Indian subcontinent. These wolves are nocturnal and hunt from dusk to dawn, using different strategies for their various prey animals, they are said to be exceptional in speed and endurance. Indian wolves will feed on livestock when natural prey is scarce. This causes human wolf conflicts and wolf persecution since human population density is high in these areas. These wolves travel in smaller packs. They are less vocal than other variants of the gray wolf, and have a reputation for being cunning predators. The Italian wolf, also known as the Apennine wolf, is a subspecies of gray wolf native to the Italian peninsula. Although not universally recognized as a distinct subspecies, it does appear to be genetically different from other Eurasian wolves, and has a distinct skull morphology. You can find it throughout the Italian peninsula, western Italy, and parts of southern France and Switzerland. The Italian wolf features prominently in Latin and Italian cultures, such as in the legend of the founding of Rome. Found throughout the eastern part of North America, the eastern wolf is subject of some debate regarding its categorization. Many studies have found the eastern wolf to be the product of ancient and recent genetic admixture between the gray wolf and the coyote. Some of the earliest specimens were discovered in Alaska, and were dated 810,000 years old. In Ontario, the wolf is listed as threatened due to its declining population and continued hunting. The Arctic wolf is a gorgeous canine. It inhabits the northernmost regions of the world in Canada's Queen Elizabeth Islands, from Melville Island all the way to Ellesmere Island. In the wild, their diet primarily consists of muskox and arctic hares. But they've also been found to prey on lemmings, caribou, and birds. The arctic wolf is relatively unafraid of humans. It can be coaxed to approach people in some areas. Thanks to its isolation, this white furry predator is not threatened by hunting and habitat destruction in the same way as its southern relatives. The Vancouver Island Wolf is a very rare subspecies of wolf. It only lives on Canada's Vancouver Island. There are estimated to be less than 190 wolves on the island. They measure roughly 26 to 32 inches high, 4 to 5 feet from nose to end of tail, and weighing roughly 60 pounds. You may also know them as simply sea wolves. Their main food source is seafood, making up 90% of its diet. Salmon accounts for nearly a quarter of their diet. They also forage on barnacles, clams, herring eggs, seals, river otters, and whale carcasses. Next up is the Mexican wolf, also known as the lobo. It's often considered the rarest wolf subspecies in North America. It was once very common in the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. However, wolf hunting decimated the population over the last few centuries driving the subspecies to near extinction. Thankfully, as a result of a dedicated breeding program, the Mexican wolf population is on the rise. As of 2021, there are 186 wild Mexican wolves, and 350 in captive breeding programs. A large improvement over the 11 individuals that were released in Arizona in 1998. The British Columbian wolf, is part of a dwindling population of wolves found in the coastal area of British Columbia, as well as parts of Yukon, Canada. This wolf was first classed as a distinct subspecies in 1941 by Edward Goldman. He described the specimen as being large, with a skull closely resembling that of the interior Alaskan wolf. Nowadays, the local wolf populations of British Columbia are legally hunted in their home range. This is an effort organized by local authorities to help preserve the mountain caribou of British Columbia. The Hudson Bay Wolf It was first classed as a distinct subspecies in 1941 by Edward Goldman, who described it as being a white-colored, medium-sized subspecies similar to the Arctic wolf. In the Taxonomic Authority titled Mammal Species of the World in 2005, this wolf was recognized as a subspecies of Connie's lupus. They have bushy hair that can vary from a light gray to a yellowish white or cream color, and they weigh anywhere from 80 to 140 pounds, with females being slightly smaller than males. The Northern Rocky Mountain Wolf is an endangered wolf species found in both the United States and Canada. Also known as the Northern Rocky Mountain Timber Wolf, this species feeds primarily on mule deer and Canadian beaver, although it may hunt other animals if the opportunity arises. Although this canine has a food requirement of about 10 to 21% of its body weight, it can still survive on smaller amounts for several days. Cannibalism in times of severe food shortage occurs, as a pack will kill and eat an injured or weak member of the group. 
Considered to be the smallest of the wolves found in the polar region, the Baffin Island wolf is one of the least commonly sighted wolves in the world. It is a subspecies of grey wolf which resides exclusively on Baffin Island and several nearby islands. It was not formally recognized as a subspecies until 1943 when it was given its own taxonomic classification. Early records and evidence suggest that the wolves in western Greenland migrated there from Baffin Island, and are descendants of the Baffin Island wolf subspecies. The Labrador wolf is a very rare subspecies of Canis lupus. It inhabits the Labrador Peninsula as well as parts of northern Quebec in Canada. Due to overhunting in the early 1900s, Labrador wolf sightings were infrequent through the 1950s. In March 2012, a hunter shot and killed a large canine on the Bonavista Peninsula in Canada, thinking it to be a coyote. Genetic testing found it to be a Labrador wolf. This predator is on the endangered species list and is considered to be at risk for extinction. Next up we have the interior Alaskan wolf. It was recognized as a subspecies of Connie's lupus in 2005, in the taxonomic authority mammal species of the world. Known as the Yukon wolf, it is native to parts of British Columbia, the Northwest Territories, interior Alaska, and Yukon. When it was first described in 1905 by the American zoologist Daniel Elliott, he distinguished this wolf by the teeth in both jaws being large and heavy. It is suspected that various types of diseases such as rabies and distemper, affect this subspecies, sometimes to the point that the stability of the subspecies is changed in parts of its region. The Alaskan Tundra Wolf, also known as the Barren Ground Wolf, is a North American subspecies of gray wolf native to the barren grounds of the Arctic coastal tundra region. It was named in 1912 by botanist Garrett Smith Miller. It closely resembles the interior Alaskan wolf. But compared to its much more broadly distributed cousin, sightings of the Alaskan tundra wolf are hard to come by. Spotting one while in the outdoors is a particularly special moment. Also known as the island's wolf, the Alexander Archipelago wolf is a subspecies isolated from the rest of North America by the coast mountains. It inhabits the area of southeast Alaska and it's believed there are less than 70 individuals left in the wild. This lesser-known wolf population has been steadily declining as a direct result of Sitka black-tailed deer disappearing from the area. They have a propensity for different color phases, from pure black to combinations of black and white, to a much brighter cinnamon color. Arguably the largest gray wolf subspecies in the world, the northwestern wolf can be found throughout western Canada and some parts of Alaska. Interestingly, this wolf subspecies was used for the Yellowstone National Park Wolf Reintroduction Program, and it is widely believed that they are descended from the last gray wolves to colonize North America. The Mackenzie River Wolf. It's a subspecies of gray wolf found in Canada's southern portion of Northwest Territories. Due to the remoteness of the subspecies range, relatively little is known about them in the scientific community. They can be found in a protected area in the vicinity of the east arm of the Great Slave Lake in Canada, and are recognized as a subspecies of Canis lupus in the Taxonomic Authority Mammal Species of the World in 2005. Originally found throughout the Queen Elizabeth Islands and parts of Greenland, this wolf was heavily persecuted. Today it is fully protected and about 90% of the wolf's range falls within the boundaries of the Northeast Greenland National Park. The oldest wolf remains in Greenland date to 7,600 years ago, however they may have been there earlier because their main prey, the caribou, dates back to 8,900 years ago. In 2018, it was estimated that the total population of the Greenland wolf was about 200, but with significant uncertainty due to its remote range. Native to the southeastern United States, the red wolf is sometimes considered a distinct species, Connie's rufus, but this proposal is still debated. Because of this, it is sometimes excluded from endangered species lists, despite its critically low numbers. The red wolf was nearly driven to extinction by the mid-1900s due to aggressive predator control programs in addition to habitat destruction and extensive hybridization with coyotes. A study from 2020 conducted DNA sequencing of canines across southeastern U.S. to detect those with any red wolf ancestry. The study found that red wolf ancestry exists in the coyote populations of southwestern Louisiana and southeastern Texas, but also newly detected in North Carolina. Last but not least on our list we have the domesticated dog. It is classified as a descendant of the wolf, which is characterized by an upturning tail. It derived from an ancient extinct wolf, and the modern gray wolf is the dog's nearest living relative. 
In fact, domestic dogs and wolves can even interbreed to produce a hybrid that we aptly name the wolf dog. The dog's influence on human society has given them the nickname of man's best friend. They perform many roles for humans, such as hunting, herding, protection, assisting police and the military, companionship, therapy, and aiding disabled people. Dogs are the most variable mammal on earth with around 450 breeds globally recognized. Their personality traits include hypersocial behavior and aggression, which demonstrates the functional and behavioral diversity of dogs. But as much as your pup may want to howl at the moon, he's probably not ready to join a local wolf pack just yet. I hope you enjoyed this video on different wolf subspecies. Have a great day and stay tuned for more videos on wildlife.